coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next Java Made Easy tutorial. And for this tutorial and the next one, these are going to be very important tutorials for beginners. Uh, even if you're an intermediate and advanced programmer, you may gain something for the, from this, but this is mainly aimed for beginners. And what this is, uh, it's, it's a simple calculator program, so we're going to create a simple calculator. And what we're going to be doing with this calculator program is we're going to modify it to to with different code to show you that you can create the same code you can create the same program with different code and that's valuable to uh, any programmer knowing that there's different ways to do certain things right because I hear people always saying this is the right way or the wrong way to do it and in some cases yeah that uh, that is the case so such so as like syntax and stuff like that but in terms of actually the code execution and and such i see it as there's there's just more efficient code right if your code runs and executes correctly and it can run the program that's great you got it you got it working is it wrong nope it's right it's definitely right it's operating can it be more efficient it can always be more efficient then you got to think like a programmer okay now i got to optimize okay now how can i make it more efficient what different models can i put in to make it a better program and so we're going to be sort of practicing this with this calculator program and hopefully you guys uh, gain some some insight from this so first what we're going to do is we're going to import the java util scanner and uh, we're going to make uh, three ints. We're going to say num1 equals 0, num2 equals 0, and operation equals 0. So I'm not sure if I taught this when we were creating uh, variables and stuff, but you can declare multiple variables on the same line and initialize them on the same line as well. Uh, now, I, I don't know if I said this as well, but it's always a good practice to initialize a variable as soon as you create it and only create a variable immediately right before you need it right uh, normally a lot of people teach us to make all the variables at the top of the program which I think we have been doing but it's always good to create a variable immediately right before you you need it but we're gonna declare them all at the top at once but a good reason why you should at least uh, declare a value for it is because a lot of time even for professional programs Whenever you have a bug in an operation, it could be simple. It could be as simple as they forgot to initialize a variable, and they call the variable sometime in the somewhere in the code, and then the variable is null or something, and then the program crashes. Cause so something as simple as not initializing something could be critical to the program's ex execution. So it's a good practice um, to get used to. So, anyways, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our scanner and new scanner system in and now we're just going to prompt the user to enter the first number so we're going to ask them to enter the first number then the second number and then we're going to ask them to enter the operation on what they want to do so we're going to say num1 is equal to scanner dot next int we're going to say system dot out dot print not uh, print sorry enter the second number and we'll, we're doing print because we want it to we want to enter the number on the same line and then we're going to say okay print enter the operation enter a number to specify your operation so we're going to put this on a new line and we're going to say one for add, two for subtract, three for multiply, and four for divide. So simple enough. And then we're going to get our operation. So uh, we're going to say next int. So now all we have to do is um, do whatever we need to do with the operation. So we're going to say system dot out dot print and we're going to say okay our first number we're going to put the operation symbol plus the second number 
and then we're gonna put the equal sign and then we're gonna put num1 plus num2 now whenever I'm doing like operations to actually display to the window I like to put them in brackets so I know that I'm actually doing an operation so it doesn't really confuse me so we're gonna say else if operation equals to 2 and I, I know I don't really like copying and pasting but to save time we're gonna do that so we're just gonna change the symbol that it displays and change the operation So if it equals to three, we want to multiply. So change that to the multiply symbol and actually multiply the two to get the result. And we're just gonna put else and we're gonna have divide. So simple enough. So it says, okay, whatever the first number was, uh, the symbol, whatever the second number was, and then it says equals and it does the operation to give you the result. So we're going to run this program and we're gonna say, okay, the first number, to five, the second number is equal to four, and our operations add. So five plus four equals to nine. So we've got that working. We're like, okay, man, we have the best program ever made. Uh, but now let's look at a different way to actually execute it. So what is something similar to if statements? We have switch statements. So we could say, okay, switch operation, and we could say, okay, case one you want to add so if they enter one want to add case two you want to subtract don't forget the breaks case three so if they enter three they want to multiply and case four they want to divide Erase this here, and let's just execute it just to, to show you that it's the exact same program, just a slightly different code. So let's do 5 and let's do 4 again, and let's just do the addition again. And 5 plus 4 is equal to 9. So we finally we've gotten that working differently. But let's see a, a different twist on what we can actually uh, do with this program. So what we're going to do is instead of making the operator operation sorry an inter, integer we're going to make this uh, let's call this operator and let's set it to zero and uh, I don't know if I just explained this in chart uh, about chars but we can set chars to an integer value uh, what the value actual value will be it will convert it to the actual ASCII value of the actual chart so first we're going to prompt for the first the number then we're going to prompt the user we're going to say system out print enter the operator and so we're going to get the operator and we're going to say scanner dot next chart but oops next chart doesn't exist so we're going to say next char at zero so if you enter a long number or a long um, set of strings or whatever it will just get the first element and so we're gonna get the first one and then we're gonna get the second number and voila so all we have to do sorry so all we have to do now changes to operator and instead of checking for case one two and three now we just have to check the symbols So if they enter the minus symbol, then that. If they enter the multiply symbol, they do that. If they enter the divide symbol, you do that. And so let's run this. So enter the first number, five, and let's say times four. Five times four equals 20. So now we've just improved it slightly. Instead of having to enter a number, we just have to enter the actual operation and it does the actual operation for us. So last but not least, there's something we can do to make our, our program a little more efficient. 
Well, if we look at uh, our switch statement right here, we if we look at all the system print lines, they all basically do the same thing, right? The only difference is the symbol and the actual execution. So what we can do is let's just co let's copy this right now, paste this right here. So we're just gonna switch this from print line to print, and we're gonna say okay, num one plus uh plus or sorry, we're gonna put num one operator plus num two and the equal sign, and let's get rid of the rest. So now all we have to do in here is just do the operation. So it's gonna do the first part for us, and then just based on what we entered, it calculates everything for us. So voila, so let's run this program to see how it runs. So we're gonna say five operator times four, and oh my gosh, 54 equals 20. What the hell is going on? Okay, so um, like I said before, the chars you can put it into integer value, and it will convert it to the actual ASCII value. So chars in itself uh, can be represented as, as integers. So what I'm going to show you right now is uh, sorry about that. Um, I was just searching up something quick if you could do it. Um, but if we look in the ASCII table right now, for the star symbol, we have the decimal value 42. So when you convert the, this the star equal to, when you add a char with an integer, it's going to be represented as the number 42. And so when we go back to a program, it says, okay, when we say print, we say, okay, 5 plus 42 plus 4. And therefore, it gives us the number 51 equals 20. So what can we do just to uh, to get rid of this? Let's just put uh, double quotations. Easy way to get rid of it. Double quotations. So it doesn't add them directly like that. And let's run our program one last time. Say five times four, and it says five times four equals twenty. So that's it for this part of the tutorial. In the next part of the tutorial, we're going to continue with our calculator program to make it even better. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And bye for now.